Hello and welcome to the Back Nine Report, where every week Fred Alvader and I check in on the world of golf to bring you the latest news, insights, analysis, interviews, recaps, previews. It will cover anything and everything golf. In other words, if it happened in golf, we have it for you. And Fred, this, it seems like a weekly thing that we have to talk about the new things on the LIV. And uh, how are you today, first of all? I'm fantastic, Carlos. Uh, we are up here right now. I'm in a little place called Sky Valley, Georgia. It's clear up in the northeast corner of Georgia, where Tennessee, North Carolina, South Carolina all kind of come together up here. We're, we're kind of up in the Blue Ridge Mountains a little bit, um, where you guys are sweltering in 90 degree and 100 degree heat. It was 80 degrees and sunny up here today. It was absolutely gorgeous. Um, so up here in the mountains, it's very cool. Uh, the people have just been fantastic here welcoming us in. Uh, we got to play the golf course today, had a nice dinner with them. But, Carlos, I, I want to – listen, I know you don't want to talk about the U.S. Open, but I got to open with that. We got we to gotta congratulate our good friend Kieran Clark for correctly picking Matt Fitzpatrick to win last week's U.S. Open over Will Zaltoris and Scotty Scheffler. It was a great finish to a wonderful week at a historic course. We still had Rory McIlroy on the leaderboard. We had Colin Morikawa up there. It was really a good finish. It was, it was, and we have to congratulate also, uh, you know, Matt Fitzpatrick finally fulfilling that big uh, future that we had expected from him for years now, but really he has been playing well. And like Kieran mentioned, you know, he, it was due. The one that I keep waiting for is Will Salatoris again, so close. I, I, I feel for him, but hopefully, I, I think he has a future in his, I mean, a major in his future, so. Uh, it's just he really a, seems to get up for those big events. He's always right there. It's amazing. And it's good because, you know, we know about other player that was gearing all the time for the majors. And now we know that player is not going to be on the PGA Tour. And that's Bruce Kepka. You know, there's turbulent times right now on the PGA Tour. They keep rolling because uh, as yet one of its biggest name stars is poised to join the Greg Norman-led LIV Golf Invitational Series. That's according to the Telegraph, because the UK paper reported that Brooke will enlist the, that controversial Saudi back tour, joining Phil Mickelson and Dustin Johnson and Bryson DeChambeau and other stars of the game that have defected. Uh, Kapka, as you know, have won four major championships, notably scrubbed the PGA Tour from his social media platforms. Oh my God, he did that. So he's expected, according to that report, to play in the LIV golf event next week outside of Portland, Oregon. Brooks is already 32 years old. It's not, he's old, but 32 already in golf is starting to pass that 20s that right now seems to be like the target to start getting into your prime. Uh, for me, I see it as a big get for LIV, considering that. I mean, like his rival, uh, Bryson DeChambeau, I guess they'll, he just wanted to keep that going somewhere else. And with DJ, he's in the prime of his career right now. Some of the other players have joined the LIV. You know, they're over 48 years of age or older and really have seen already their past their prime. And we learned that PGA Tour Commissioner Jay Monahan, meanwhile, of course, he had to call for that mandatory player meeting today at the Travelers Championship in Cromwell to discuss, among other things, a condensed fall schedule with March largest purses, purses, right? Of course, he had to talk about this. We know he had to. Kepka is still in the field for the Travelers, though he was not at the meeting. Fred, this is just starting to get uh, really, really interesting because Brooks is a big name it's a big get for LIV. And uh, who's going to be next? Abraham Answer, we learned also, is going to be there now on the LIV. He's one of the up-and-coming Latin American players. Uh, not as a big get of Kepka, but hey, he's uh, he was one of those players that are up-and-coming as well. Well, Kepka is the second highest ranked player to jump to the LIV. Of course, Dustin Johnson was the highest at 16. And now Kepka's at 19, he answers at 20. So those are all really big names, but are they really that huge of a get? Okay. The PGA Tour future is Xander Shoffley, Kalamara Kawa, Scotty Scheffler, uh, on and on and on, right? 
these are the guys that people want to see right now. Jordan Spieth. Um, they're still the guys that draw the eyeballs. I don't know that people are watching golf to see Brooks Kepka right now. Brooks has had injuries. That, that's unfortunate, but, you know, he's played around the world. He started out playing in Europe. He's played a long time. He swings hard. It's hard on his body and stuff break down. So at 32 years old, he might be at the end. So, you know, he's, he's made a lot of money um, on the PGA tour, but he's sitting there looking at Dustin Johnson getting a million plus for coming and playing, not even have to earn it. He just gets that. And then he's seeing Charles Swartzel, who he feels he can beat every day of the week, picking up 4.75 mil a couple of weeks ago in that first LIB series event in London. That didn't hurt his, his idea of maybe jumping ship and joining the LIB. Plus, he's got his brother Chase Kepka already over there. And I mentioned that to you last week. I mentioned to you and Kirian that Brooks Kepka was rumored to be ready to switch over to the LIV. And it kind of makes sense. Um, yes, he's won four major championships. Uh, but due to these injuries, he's not won in the PJ Tour since back to back. Well, he's won, he won the 2021 Waste Management. He won back to back PGAs in seven, 2017 and 18. He won back-to-back U.S. Opens in 2018-2019. Total of eight tour wins. Um, but after DJ, you know, and some of these other guys jumped over, he's kind of at the maybe at the back end of his career. Injuries maybe don't let him play, practice as much as he wants to, to be as competitive as he is. So go for the money. If they're going to put it in your pocket, take it and run. Well, there's a couple of things that we have to discuss in this. Uh, because, yes, he, ha he has had injuries, but now he's going through a very friendly schedule who could help him get back, in, back on track. And again, less events like, and less holes. And also, remember, one thing that we learned this week is that uh, LIV is going to be uh, applying for official world golf ranking points, which was one of the questions that we still had. What, are, what is it going to happen that is going to be very key. Uh, when that voting takes place, what is going to happen with Jay Monahan, who is one of the voters there? Of course, we know what he's going to vote. He's going to vote no, right? But the thing is, what's going to happen? Is it going to be applied for that? They're applying. Will it be approved? I think they will. There's no, no reason why not. How can, they, how can they not, with these quality of players, how can they not grant them official world golf ranking points for their tournaments? And they should. I mean, they're still worldwide players. And uh, that doesn't mean, even if they give them uh, official world golf ranking points, that doesn't mean they're going to have the equivalent to a tournament on the PGA Tour, which has higher ranking players. So the, the, the yeah. weight of the tournament is not going to yeah. be the same anyways. Uh, but it does give an opportunity to those players to be able to have somewhat of a way to try to qualify for the majors, which is a very important thing, which we have seen so far, the majors have been open to keeping those players in there. Now, one interesting thing that happened is that ESPN is reporting that, like I mentioned, Jay Monahan during this uh, meeting, players meeting that he had today, uh, is proposing a revamp schedule that could be approved as soon as next year, that will include increased purses worth at least 20 million in at least eight mar existing marquee events. Then also reportedly, there will be three new events with purses at least 25 million that would be similar to the LIV golf events. You know, smaller fields, no cuts. So try to convince their players, you know, I, I'm, I'm giving money as well. So two players uh, at the meeting told the Associated Press that the PGA Tour also plans to return to a calendar season that would start in January and then the FedEx Cup playoffs would be eligible for only the top uh, 70 players. Great idea. You start reducing it only to the top players. Currently, as we know, only the, the top 125 makes the postseason. But if you want to try to convince the players for a shorter schedule and a better fall and a better uh, lap playoff season, that's the way to do it. Are they still going to try that in, in by, by Labor Day? Are they still shooting for that? That's what, they're, that's what they're thinking, because what they're saying is 
that the fall would be used for the players and beyond those 70 to try to secure the cards for the following year. Although research has showed that most inside the top 100 would be safe, right? But that's something that the PGA Tour, and I, and I have to give kudos, that's great thinking because it's the true way to try to avoid and give the player something that, hey, I'm getting more money here too. I still get that legacy that I've been building on and uh, I get the money that they're offering there. I don't need to go there. Anymore. I think we both agree a shorter schedule is necessary. This wraparound season and these guys playing all year long is just too much. It's, it's too much, it's too hard on their bodies. And yeah, it sounds like, yeah, 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 yeah. You're playing for millions of dollars, suck it up and play. And, you know, they're playing a kid's game golf, but still it's hard on their bodies. It's harder on longevity for a career and all that kind of stuff. We, we both agree that a shorter schedule is needed. Let's bring it to a culmination in at the end of August. If that's when they say, I'd rather see it in September, October, but if they say August, okay, fine, have some events, whatever. But the problem is, Carlos, how do you get these younger guys up into those top ranks? So, and, and, and the other problem with that is these corn fairy guys are not making enough money. They need to share some more of that money with those corn fairy guys or these guys are trying to get up there. Well, that's what, one of the things that we have been talking about, how you're gonna actually give those players uh, a platform to try to prove themselves and be on, that, on those top rankings. And uh, maybe the European tour will become another feeder tour, you know, which is something that we have talked about before, uh, adding to the feeder tours that they have. And who knows, maybe that's gonna be something on the same on the US. There's gonna be one for those players that are behind uh, that 70 uh, top ranking players, right? Uh, that rebound schedule, eight marquee events, three new ones that are going to be 25 worth 25 million dollars we still have to see what that is but uh that's close to the to the ones that we have been saying all, all along that should be already marquee events up their pride their, their purses and, and try to incentivize keeping your players there but back to brooks kepka and now we'll see if something with this offer from the pga tour will there be anybody else making the jump to a library? The, the way that I see it is just another stars, like maybe a Ricky Fowler. Some of those who are really not, they have been names, stars in name, but they really haven't been producing for the past few years, need the money, I'm gonna go there. Uh, there's no way I'm gonna earn it here. Close uh, out their career with some big checks and walk away. Yeah, and uh, the thing is then if that is the case, what the LIV is going to have to, now it's on the LIV to see if finally the PGA Tour does that, how are the LIV is going to counter? Because I don't see much attraction other than try to pay off some of the other players. But right now the top players are not going anywhere. They seem to be, yeah, we know <laughs> DJ Brooks uh, and uh, Bryson all said, though we're sitting here and all of a sudden they're there. Uh, but I don't know. To me, I don't see how you can counter at this time what the PGA Tour great proposition that they're doing to their players. Yeah, I, obviously they had to make some changes and had to do stuff quick. So, yeah, Jay and his staff are working to get them without question. And, and that's what these guys are complaining about. The season's long. And just like I said earlier, and they, and they have to figure out how to change it and do that. So kudos for at least trying to find a way to get that done. But Carlos, I, a couple of things. Um, this adding Kepka is really a big deal. Dustin Johnson was a game changer for the LIV. You could have Phil Mickelson, and that's great. But that's just that was like a show pony. Okay, that's you know that 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 wasn't going to draw people just because he was there. But bringing Dustin Johnson and now bringing Brooks Kepka, and then you throw in names like Patrick Reed and Bryson DeChambeau and a few other ones, then now you've got you've really got some some meat there. You've got something to hook on to. So, Carlos, we both know these guys are putting this money in. They're not doing it out of the kindness of their heart. These guys yeah. want to get a return on their money at some point, okay? Um, and they're going to get it from sponsorships, and they're going to get it from television. And so bringing those guys in make this thing much more marketable 
for TV and much more marketable to go to some Asian sponsors or some other European sponsors, Russia or wherever, and say, hey, we got this series. We can put a couple tournaments in your, your countries and we can market and you can, you, you can get exposure all over the world uh, through our TV and all this kind of thing. This really adds to that. And a little, little piece of news also that came out today was that Nick Faldo is leaving CBS at the end of the season and Trevor Immelman is taking his place. So I found that curious. Now, Nick Faldo and, and I don't know if Nick Faldo and, and, Nick, and uh, Greg Norman are that good of friends. They might be, I'm not sure. Um, could Nick Faldo be moving over with Greg to head up the TV programming and that kind of thing? Maybe Nick is tired of just being a talking head. Now he's going to be an executive. He's going to run the, uh, the, uh, the media uh, production or communications for like the LIV. Is that something they got rid of that other guy that everybody was said was pretty good. Could Nick be sliding into that? A lot of stuff, Carlos, just a lot of stuff going on. Yeah, we we're seeing shots from each side and I wouldn't be surprised that Nick, appear somewhere at the LIV, definitely uh, like you. I don't know if they were close friends uh, or anything, but at the end of the day, uh, some offer he was, he could be receiving at this time that makes him walk away from CBS. And like you mentioned, if there's one thing that all those players that have moved to the LIV have, is they do have appeal for, for the sponsors and for the TV that maybe unfortunately and you can say other than Rory McIlroy here on the on this side really think about who have we been speaking or talking about on these players they're great players but other than Rory who has that appeal to go on tv and go and take the attention Brooks and how long did we talk about Brooks and and uh and Bryson DeChambeau and their supposed feud for how long did we do that we talk about Sergio all the time all the antics that he does Ian Poulter Lee Westwood all those people where we talk about them because of the things they do there's no such thing as bad publicity and right now they're getting all the publicity not even with this great tournament that we had right now everybody was just talking about oh look Dustin Johnson was there the, and, and all the things that I was hearing is is any of those guys going to try to be and win? What is going to happen if they win? That's what they were looking in the leaderboard, which really takes away from really the great U.S. Open that was this past week. And, and right now today, even though with that big announcement from the PGA Tour that they might be doing that, all we're doing is talking about Bruce Skipper. So uh, it's incredible. You make, you make an excellent point here. The names that they're assembling over there, uh, along with Kepka, you know, Dustin Johnson is a little bit of a controversial guy. Bryson DeChambeau, Patrick Reed, uh, Phil Mickelson with all the stuff. He, I mean, these guys get a lot of publicity, right? They draw a lot of eyeballs. And if you're starting something new, that's what you want. There is no such thing as bad PR. And they're bringing a lot of it because that's what everybody's talking about. So really, I, I almost got to tip my cap to Greg Norman, the LIV. Uh, what they're doing right now, what's coming to fruition, we thought didn't, I mean, four months ago, we thought they were just, it looked stupid. They didn't know what they were doing. <laughs> Maybe they fooled us all. Yeah, well, that's how this is. Uh, you know, we, we thought that they were dead in the water, but definitely Greg Norman has picked it up and maybe he knew something we didn't know. But anyway, this is just, not the tip, I would say the tip of the iceberg, but at the end of the day, I think golf, not right now, but eventually I think golf will be in a better place eventually because of all this. It just happened before with the WGCs coming to fruition and uh, something will happen. We'll be here to report it. So any final words before we close? No, that's pretty much all I've got. We covered all, all the things I want to talk about. I, it's just, it amazes me the news that keeps coming out. Like I said, we I mentioned last week that it was rumored what that Brooks was going to go and join his brother and, and boom here this week, he does it. So, and he, and he was even ouchy at the, at the press conference during the U S open. And what do you guys ask me about that for? Let's talk about the U S open. It's a great tournament. I'm here. Uh, what a bunch of crap. <laughs> 
Yeah, you know, that's that's the publicity they are getting. But anyway, thank you for joining us. It's always our pleasure to bring you the latest in the golf news world and information. Remember to subscribe to our channel. The description has the link there automatically. Click on it. You'll be subscribed. Thank you for joining us.